Um, it feels like we should start, of course, with the disaster that struck uh, in Grenfell Tower. 58 people missing, presumed dead. Huge questions remain unanswered about everything from the cladding uh, to sprinklers in the building. Have these people been failed by the government? Well, it's a terrible tragedy, and every time you watch the news, you want to weep. Uh, all those people who've suffered, the people who've families of those who've lost their lives. Um, I think what it shows is that the Conservative Party have to be the party of social reform. We have to be the party of re redistribution. And I'll explain what that means. We have to be the party of uh, social justice. We have to be the party for workers. Uh, and uh, we need to show people that actually our main mission is to help those who are disadvantaged, who, who live on low incomes. Do you think that the response to the tragedy in, in, in the last the days following it has perhaps shown that many people don't see the Conservative Party in the way that you describe, that people are taking to the streets to protest uh, because they believe that the Conservative Party is more bothered about the rich and not the poor? I think whenever there's a tragedy like this, the response is always difficult and you always need to find out what has occurred. But not just with the Grenfell uh, tragedy, um, there is an underlying, I believe, an underlying feeling amongst many people across the country that the Conservatives, it's not so much the party of the rich, but the Conservatives are not on the side of those of low incomes. And the Prime Minister, when she arrived in Downing Street, made a powerful speech that reached out to millions. And I think it was one of the reasons why, uh, at the beginning, her popularity was high, which said that she wanted a Britain that worked for everyone and said that she wanted to reach out to those who are disadvantaged. It was one of the reasons why I supported him. We've got to get back to that. Do you think you've gone away from it then since that speech? Well, I think there are a host of things that come up in government. Government's like a big ship that sails to a destination. You have storms every day. Sometimes you have to veer right, veer left. Um, we've had these terrible terrorism outrages as well. Uh, but I think this has to be our central mission. If the Conservative Party is to survive and to ever get a healthy majority, and I don't just mean a working majority or a coalition, we have to show all the people that we are on all of the people's sides, whatever background that they come from. And that's why I say, talk about social justice and redistribution. So what I mean by redistribution, not necessarily the labour term, but we say that we raise extra money by cutting taxes for the well-off. We say that we raise extra monies by cutting business taxes, corporation tax. Actually, that's true. The figures show that. I think what we need to do is redistribute those extra monies raised from cutting taxes for the well-off or cutting taxes for business and focus that money in a special redistribution fund to help our poorest communities, particularly uh, the kind of people who live in Grenfell Tower or lived in Grenfell Tower and elsewhere across our country. Earlier on this week, um, you had some pretty harsh words, I guess, for the future of the Conservative Party. We can just have a look uh, at what you did say. Uh, you said that the Conservative Party is on death row. I mean, that is a pretty forlorn statement about where you believe your party is heading. Are things really that bad? Well, I think that, of course, we increased our vote share. Um, but if you increase vote share in very safe areas, but actually lose seats or have hyper-marginal seats up and down the country and do so badly in London, I think we need to ask searching questions. I think this is the time to do it. But to be fair, the Prime Minister has done that. Um, she came to meet the Conservative MPs last week. I think she recognises uh, the challenges that we face as a party. But I think it is those, our duty, I think we need a fundamental uh, rebranding. I think we need to look fundamentally at our narrative. And I also think we need to look fundamentally at our message and our policies. Is Theresa May really the person who is going to be capable of doing this? Because she just called the selection, lost seats. Is she really the person well, who can... I back the Prime Minister. Um, as I said, when I was literally inspired, I think millions of people were inspired when she first stood on the steps of the Are you still Street. inspired and by her? I think that the Prime Minister, we have to uh, have the Prime Minister doing the job. I think she recognises the problem. She said she's going to get us out of the mess that occurred in the Conservative Party, and I, and I believe her. OK. There are reports uh, in the papers today uh, that some MPs are preparing to mm. sign letters of no confidence in the Prime Minister, that they're giving her 10 days uh, in which to turn things around. What are you honestly picking up on the backbenchers? What's the mood? Well, I'm not one of those people. I, I, my view is very simple. I don't think... And we could have Alexander the Great, we could have Archangel Gabriel as leader of the Conservative Party, but unless we fundamentally change and work out what we stand for, show people that we are on the side of the most disadvantaged, show people that we are the real workers' party in terms of wages, in terms of jobs and skills, in terms of welfare, in terms of rights, in terms of workers' services like energy bills, 
um, then we won't um, achieve what we want to do, whoever is the leader. That's what your view is. Are you picking up from some of your colleagues, though, that they have perhaps rather less well, patience? There are always murmurings here and there who, uh, at any time, but uh, I think most of the party wants... Uh, um, Theresa May to continue. I think uh, the country obviously is in a difficult way at the, at the present time in terms of security, in terms of the tragedy that we've just witnessed over the past few days. And uh, I think it would be wrong to change the leader. How long do you give her? As I say, I think it would be wrong to change the leader. I think that what the country needs is, dare I say it, to use a phrase, is some form of stability because uh, I think uh, the, country is, the country deserves it, the country needs it. Strong and stable leadership. Who thought uh, you'd be here saying that again? Uh, Robert Halfen, thank you very much for uh, coming on the show and giving us your thoughts.